In this video, we're going to discuss a caveat of the use of activity in that you have to make a choice about what the standard state is and whether that standard state is based on Raoul's law or whether it's based on Henry's law. So in the previous video, we defined the activity to be the ratio of the vapor pressure of a given component of a solution divided by the vapor pressure of the pure liquid of that component under the same conditions. And this is called the Raoul's Law Standard State because it's based off of satisfying Raoul's Law at large mole fractions. So the activity of a given component is going to approach the mole fraction as the mole fraction of that component approaches 1 or as the solution approaches pure liquid of component I. We also define the activity coefficient, gamma, which is defined as the activity for that component divided by its mole fraction and the activity is going to equal 1 whenever the vapor pressure is just equal to uh, the mole fraction or the when the vapor pressure of the component is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure liquid okay so what is this Raoul's law standard state good for so we can see that it obeys and behaves as an ideal solution as the mole fraction approaches 1 or as it approaches a pure liquid of just whatever component I is. So this is then called a solvent reference of that because of that because it becomes the standard state is when component I is present in overwhelming concentration almost pure almost entirely component 1 or almost entirely component I so component I in that case is called a solvent when it is present at very very large mole fraction such that it is dominating the solution and this is good for solutions which are miscible over a large range of mole fractions so many solutions are non-ideal and there are certain mole fractions where the two uh, the two liquids will not mix with each other into one phase and they'll separate and form multiple different phases. So for example if you take water and then some uh, large organic molecule like water and hexane and you try to mix those two there are many mole fractions where the two of them will not mix equally and the solution will not be miscible. So Raoul's law standard state is a poor standard state for a solution in which they're not miscible in all concentrations. So we'll remind ourselves that we have Raoul's law, which says that the vapor pressure of a given component is equal to its mole fraction times the vapor pressure of its pure liquid. And in contrast to that, we could also try to base the standard state based off of Henry's law. And Henry's law said that the vapor pressure of a component of a solution is equal to its mole fraction times a constant called the Henry's Law constant. And this is true at low mole fractions. Let me try to get that K right. Okay, that's a, that's a decent K. Okay, so we have our various expressions for chemical potential. We have that mu I for solution I'm going to put a parenthesis up here for R, saying that it's based off of Raoul's law, the chemical potential based off of Raoul's law, is equal to mu I star, chemical potential of the pure liquid, plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of the activity coefficient, as we had defined in a previous video. But now, uh, what I want to do is toss in another term here and we're going to define a different standard state that's going to be called the Henry's Law standard state. So remember that the value of anything like Gibbs energy or chemical potential, those are all arbitrary to within a constant because you can define the standard state to be anything. You can define the zero of energy really anywhere you want to and it's only through the appropriate choice and knowledge of what the standard state is that an, a, a value of energy has any meaning. So what we're going to do, so we're going to define another standard state for this component I and its chemical potential and we're going to denote this with a parentheses H here for Henry's law standard state. That's going to be the chemical potential of the pure liquid 
plus, now we're going to toss in another term here, RT times the log of Henry's law coefficient divided by vapor pressure of pure liquid plus this other term here, RT log of activity. So let's think about what Henry's law says about mole fraction and activity. So in terms of Henry's law, a solution is going to obey Henry's law at very, very low mole fraction when it's appropriate for you to call that component a solute since it's present in very, very low mole fraction. And for a solute, we want the activity to approach the mole fraction as the mole fraction approaches zero. So we want the solution to behave ideally with respect to Henry's law at very, very low mole fraction. And in order for that to be the case, in order for a solution to behave according to some law, the activity has to approach the mole fraction under some limiting condition. So then what we have to define as the activity in order for this to be true, the activity under Raoul's law is pi over pi star. So if we if we look in here and see what we have to make the activity to make these kind of equations match up in the end, so we're going to define our activity to be the vapor pressure of that component divided by the Henry's law constant instead of the vapor pressure of the pure liquid. So this is going to be our Henry's law standard state value for the activity. So some points of note that we mentioned, this is called a solute reference because it's obeying Henry's law at very low concentrations. A solute is something which is present in low concentrations. So good at low concentration. Mole fraction being a metric for concentration. And it's also good for sparingly soluble solutions. So things where there is not an infinite amount of solubility. For example, if you tried to mix water and hexane, you could mix a very, very tiny amount of hexane together with water, and it would dissolve and it would form a solution. And it would and its activity would obey this type of Henry's law standard state at very, very low mole fractions. But of course, at larger mole fractions, it would uh, form two phases which aren't miscible with each other. So finally, we have what our uh, activity coefficients are for each of these. So activity coefficient, as I've said, defined as activity divided by mole fraction. So for our two different uh, standard states for activity. We have the activity coefficient based off of Raoul's law for component I will be its vapor pressure of that component divided by mole fraction divided by pure component I, just taking the activity and divided it by mole fraction. And for the Henry's law standard state, the activity coefficient it's going to be this vapor pressure of the component divided by mole fraction times the Henry's law constant for that given component. Really missed there. Okay, try again. Okay, so these are our two standard states. We see that there are differences in why we would want to choose each and which we would want to choose them for. So this standard activity allows us a way to uh, kind of pick which activity is the most appropriate given the type of solution that we have.